Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, coming at you with another episode of Scrap Mechanic City. In this episode, I've got a couple things I want to show you. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you guys this pretty neat PLP-50 car that I've made. And I'm also gonna head over to this pretty neat public park that I've made over in the distance there. Uh, but let's start with this car, actually. There's some really cool stuff I want to point out about it. Uh, I did a lot of research on the car and noticed a couple key features. One of them being that there was no reverse function on the car, actually. Uh, it only has drive, and so I had to do a couple cool things to make it work that way. Uh, and uh, I'll point out that I originally had uh, an engine. I tried an electric and a gas motor. Uh, but they added some crazy physics to these little tiny car or these little wheels with a small car body So I ended up having to put some thrusters on it But it worked out well because it got rid of that reverse function, which is exactly what I kind of wanted uh, So if you guys check this out so you can see it's rear wheel steering and Since there's no reverse function you might get in a bit of a jam So what you have to do actually is press the 2 key and what that will do is actually turn that back wheel. So you can actually hop out and uh, turn your car around manually uh, by hitting it with your hammer. Uh, which I thought was a pretty cool uh, feature actually, kind of made it a little more realistic. Uh, so as you can see I just pop the wheel back to uh, straight and I can steer no problem again. Uh, and another thing, since there was no reverse function because I didn't put an engine on it, uh, what I had to do for a brake was actually <laughs> add these little tiny arms underneath the car and so what that does is as you're driving you press 3 and it'll bite the ground and actually stop you. Uh, so that was kind of cool. So it's a neat little car. There's a cool kind of unique style about it and the way that it drives and the way you have to maneuver it uh, is really interesting as well. I added a little bit on the interior, not too much. Uh, I had to make it pretty hollow. Uh, but it's a fun car to drive. Uh, it can go pretty fast without tipping over. Uh, but Really, it's a, it's a dangerous drive. I'll try and maneuver around here a little bit for you guys. So you can see though, that it is actually a very nimble car. As you can see, I can do some pretty quick 180s and start going in the other direction again. I can even pick up quite a bit of speed without uh, worrying too much about uh, flipping over. And here I'll show you guys the brakes in action. Like so, it stops you pretty quickly and it, like it has the big turning radius, nice tight turning radius I should say, uh, so you can turn back around and go in the other direction. So that's the PLP 50 guys, um, a really neat car, oh I am, oh wow, I didn't think I was going to be able to do that. That's pretty funny. But that's the PLP 50, I'm going to go check out the park the now though, so you guys can uh, have a look at that. Alright guys, so here is the park that I've made. Um, it might not seem too full, and I was adding as much as I could to it, but then it started to get um, kind of like these FPS drops much sooner than I was really expecting them to. Uh, overall though, I'm pretty happy with the kind of design of the park and how easily you can actually disconnect this entire park and it'll be uh, an item on the lift as well. So. Uh, you can move this city, or sorry, you can move this uh, park anywhere in the city that you want. Uh, so I added these cool uh, kind of front doors here with opening uh, handles. Uh, so that just opens up to the park. As you can see beside it here, I have the barbecue as well. Uh, so I get a bit of an FPS drop when I walk into the park. Uh, it's not too bad though, uh, but it kind of made it annoying to uh, build in, so I kind of gave it a rest for a while. Uh, but I'll talk about a few things in this park and show you a couple highlights at the end of this video. Uh, as you can see here, this is kind of like a water fountain design, something that you'd have in a public park. Over here and over there, I've added some uh, kind of rose bushes, which adds a nice bit of color to the park. Uh, these trees are really neat, actually. At the end of this video, I'll show you guys uh, that they're on the workshop, but I'll show you some cool uh, ways that they're modular and you can do some different things with them. Uh, that's how you get these kind of different and unique looking trees um, every time. Uh, so it's kind of nice to be able to do that and keep it different. Over here, I've made an iron bench uh, surrounded by those rose bushes, actually. Uh, this iron bench is also going to be a workshop item. As you can see, I kind of laid out a path in the park and along the edges, the grass is actually a totally separate uh, object from the pathway itself. Uh, so that way I would be able to reduce uh, the lag even better. 
Over here, this is um, a really neat gazebo that I designed. Uh, it has uh, some general kind of rounded shape to it, as you can see, which is something that I wanted. So this diagonal entrance here is uh, a nice little touch, I find, to uh, the shape of the park. As you can see, though, it's pretty roomy, and it has this really neat skylight on the top as well, which I thought was a nice little addition. So this is also going to be a workshop item, so you can use that wherever you want as well. In the center of the park here, I have kind of what I would call a community garden. Uh, nothing too crazy here, you know, just trying to make it look like there's some soil in there. And all the nice uh, growing grass, grassy looking stuff. And here it's some more variations of the trees. And this corner over here to finish off the park was like a park bench uh, picnic table area. So you can actually come into the park and enjoy the weather and enjoy some lunch. And I have some garbage cans, so you can do the responsible thing when you're done. Overall, it's a, a relatively simple park, but it really adds a nice splash of color to the entire city. And I'm excited to build around it as well, and so we can get a better effect of the trees kind of standing out in the middle of a city. And with these trees, I'll be adding them around the city as well, uh, because they're really easy to work with. Uh, which I will show you guys the workshop items and how to use these trees right now. Alright guys, I've got a few of the items from the workshop uh, set up here to show you guys what I've done. Uh, and I'm going to start off with the trees here actually. So the way they work really is uh, you can spawn them on the lift uh, and very easily uh, stack them on top of each other. So if I pop one of those there and easily just uh, tip it over like so, I can actually weld it together with the other one. So if I grab it here and hop on my lift, I can go up to the top of the other tree and weld it on top. So as you can see, you can spin it around and uh, weld it in a few different directions. Uh, so that allows you to get that customized look of each tree. So if I connect it like so, uh, you can see that this is like a tree that's different from the other ones because it's been spun differently. Another neat thing that you can do actually is take off a branch like so, and then if you uh, grab it and uh, weld it from the branch piece, you can actually then move those around on the tree as well and get different, uh, different patterns and different looks so each tree is different. Uh, so it's really easy to do. Uh, over here though, this is the important thing actually. As you can see, the tree looks kind of funny. So I designed this uh, tree topper. Uh, so what you would have to do though, of course, is build your way all the way up to the top of the uh, tree so that you can actually uh, weld it on top. Uh, if I make the tree too tall like so, then it's kind of annoying, but what I can do actually is move it over to the uh, to the sanded area here, uh, and that way I can actually take my tree topper and uh, stack it on top. Now I could do it, like, you know, make a some type of staircase that allows me to uh, stack uh, trees a little easier, uh, but ultimately this method works as well if you have the time to kill, that is. So you just get on your lift and get to the top of that tree that you got going on. And it's not letting me weld it anywhere but right here, so I'll just do that. Sometimes the weld tool is kind of funny, but as you can see though, it, it generally works out. I mean, I might have to move some stuff here and there, but normally I can weld it. Uh, but I guess the weld tool is just being kind of ridiculous right now. Uh, but let's take this tree actually and plant it into the park. I'm not gonna put it to waste. Uh, and I was actually thinking behind this gazebo needed a tree. Maybe you were thinking the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to pop this down here and then get ready to tip it over by using the lift like so. And once it tips over, timber! I can actually probably not, oh, I'll be able to grab it now actually. So I just have to grab the bottom of the tree, come over here and weld it to the park. And I was thinking definitely that it needed to have a tree back there. So uh, as you can see though, guys, it's very easy to make the trees and make them all unique. Uh, different heights as well, so shorter ones and taller ones. I'm sure I could go even taller than that. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna add a couple more tree designs and uh, maybe get them around the city. Uh, so here are the workshop items though that I've added. So you got the water fountain that you can put in the park. 
Uh, a pretty simple but really elegant looking park bench to eat your lunch. A rose bush, just a concrete with some paint on it. Kind of like Alice in Wonderland, really, just painting the rose bushes. Over here, it's the iron bench that I've added. Uh, and there's actually something I forgot to add. So that fence over by City Hall there um, is really cool. And so I have this long section of it. So you can actually uh, get this from the workshop as well. So you'll be able to uh, make some really neat fences around stuff uh, very quickly. Uh, so I kind of took the time to make that and paint it for you guys. So I hope you enjoy that too. But I'm going to leave you guys with a bit of driving around in the PLP 50. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'm very appreciative of all your guys' support on the Scrap Mechanic City series, as well as my other videos. Uh, so thanks for checking it out, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.